Hello and welcome to Future Perfect Tech Shorts, I'm Tony Velasquez. A going green is big today and in just a few days, Metro Manila will see hybrid buses on its roads as Green Frog Zero Emissions puts their buses on the Buendia Calayaan route to bring passengers from the MRT, LRT and PNR stations to their destinations. Now, equipped with security cameras, air conditioning and a card payment system, the buses cost well, each trip on the bus costs only 12 pesos. And here to tell us more about the hybrid buses is Philip Apostol. He's the managing director of Green Frog Zero Emissions Buses. Ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Philip. Thank you very much Hi. for coming to the show. Green Frog. Yes. Okay, obviously because it's a green type of technology. Frogs are not all green, you know that. The yes. Philippine frog is brown, just like we are. <laughs> but Green Frog is the logo or the symbol, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, there used to be green frogs in the Philippines. I grew up in Quezon City. Yeah. And a, yes, and after the rains... You would catch green frogs. There were little shiny green frogs that would come out. And they'd stick to the wall. On the Kamyas tree. That's right. <laughs> I remember. Were we I playing in the same neighborhood? No, probably. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gone for 25 years. When I came back... What those do you mean? Were Where did you go? I worked... Uh, I studied and worked in the U.S., then mm -hmm. I worked in Europe for eight years. So is that where you were exposed to these um, green technology wh while you were abroad? The, the Europeans were very conscious about being environmentally friendly all the time. Yeah. And that's where I really picked it up. Yeah. And the idea for a hybrid bus is not really new, but the fact that or you're one of the first companies, if not the first company, to bring in this t type of bus. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think... We looked at the technology. We started looking at a pure electric bus. That did not turn out to be commercially viable. Because you'd have to have charging stations put up, right? First of all, it's very expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's prohibitively expensive. Secondly, the batteries need to get much better. You need to charge them eight hours. That's right. So it's not commercially viable. Mm. Then we looked at the next best thing, which was the hybrid bus. These buses run the whole day. They are self-charging. You okay. know, uh, a company called Eaton built this transmission system with a built-in generator. So every time the bus is running, mm. it's charging the lithium-ion batteries. All right. All right. Lithium-ion batteries. You know, that term has been very dangerous lately. Of course, we're talking about the Dreamliner. These are not the same batteries, right? Yes. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> we don't want any Boeing uh, disasters. <laughs> All right. So... The, the bus itself is a hybrid because it's made of parts that are assembled or manufactured in different countries. It's, yeah, it's uh, both ways a hybrid, figuratively and literally. It's a hybrid because it has two propulsion systems, mm -hmm. a Euro 4 diesel and an electric motor. Okay. It's also a hybrid in the sense that the parts come from all over the world. Ah. The hybrid system itself is American. Mm -hmm. The brakes are German. Mm -hmm. The lithium-ion batteries are Japanese. The chassis and the frame are uh, Chinese. Are Chinese. And all of these components are assembled in China. In China. Yes. Okay. So it's Green Frog, uh, which came up with the design and have the Chinese uh, assemble it for you. We basically looked what was in the market mm -hmm. and we took, uh, we like this part, we like this part, and let's put it all together. Right. And then we looked at the Philippine conditions about the flooding, so we raised it up a little bit. Oh, uh, there you go. Because people will think if this were an electric bus yes. and you waded through a flood, That'll be disaster. Yes. Huh. The battery is 1.68 meters off the ground, so it would be a serious flood. Yeah. So it will really have to wade through. It won't be a bus anymore. It'll probably be a, a cruise ship or a submarine. <laughs> right. But how fast does a hybrid bus go, I mean, in terms of speed? The speed, it could go up to 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. But our traffic on Bundia will only allow you to go 20, 25. Right. The average speed on Bundia is about 16 kilometers per hour. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a fast bus. It just has to be comfortable and safe enough yes. yeah, for people to ride on. Um, uh, how much, or is the fuel economy, how much is the fuel economy? How, much, uh, how many kilometers do you get per liter? Yeah. The average bus on EDSA, and I check with some of my friends with buses on EDSA, yeah. they get about one kilometer per liter. One kilometer per liter? Yes, the big buses in EDSA. Ours will get about, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. 
ours will get about two and a half. So we are okay. <laughs> very yeah. efficient compared to a bus in Edsa. But still, wow, just well, 2.5 kilometers per liter. That's, that's terrible. No, it's actually very good. You're carrying 48 people. I see. An SUV, let's not talk about brands, yeah. will get about six. And you're only talking about one person it's driving. One it. person driving. We are oh. carrying 48 people. Okay. So mm -hmm. the weight to power ratio is okay. Yes. The power to weight ratio because you're carrying 48 people. So the maximum carrying capacity is 48 people, including the driver. Yes. Uh, and a conductor, I suppose. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't need a charging station because it charges by itself yes. while it's in motion. It's self-charging. There's a form. There are two ways it captures energy from the diesel engine. Okay. When the engine is running, it turns a generator, All right. which charges the lithium-ion ba batteries. batteries. Okay. That's one. The second one, it has something called regenerative brakes. Ah. So when you step on the brakes, it actually turns that uh, Another, friction. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. It turns power. an electric motor into reverse that becomes a generator and charges the lithium-ion batteries. All right, and regenerative braking is actually already a standard feature in some of the higher-end vehicles uh, in the States and in Europe, right? So they yeah. actually used it. It's Formula One technology. Ah, I see, I see. So you see the Formula One cars don't have big engines anymore because yeah. of this technology. All right, amazing. So how many buses will be brought in? Uh, we hope to have about... 36 buses within the next 12 months. Okay. But we're bringing them in in batches. Mm. So the first batch will be uh, how many units? A batch of two, then we'll take six, then we'll take another six. Okay. And these first two units will be launched when? In a couple of weeks. In a couple of Very weeks. Very close. <laughs> okay. Uh, you just have to hurdle, I guess, the paperwork, you know, all the administrative we, yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. And yeah. that's it. And then we're, we're good to go after that. Yeah. Now, how do you see these buses competing with all the other commercial bus lines out there? I mean, habulan pa rin, I mean, Kas, yung gitgitan, yung kaskas dito, kaskas doon, because gusto ng mga bus drivers, mauna silang pumikap ng pasero. I don't know how, I don't know if the Met MMDA is actually, mm -hmm. uh, has prevented that from happening lately, but how will it compete against the other buses? I think we have certain built-in advantages that would make people choose us. Yeah. One, it's a hybrid. It, you know, it emits 80% less pollution than a normal bus. Okay. Two, oh. it's air-conditioned. Yeah. Three, we have the best drivers out there. Our drivers are MMDA TESTA certified. They're also women. We have a TAP. All the drivers are women? Except one. I see. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you mean by that, except one? Uh, it's a woman, but not a woman? No, it's a... Oh. It's a Sam is a guy. Oh, Sam is a guy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sam. <laughs> so, wh was that a conscious choice, that you wanted women to drive the Green Frog buses? Yes, I, there's a part of me that wants to empower women. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, all right, but of course uh, you but do But of course know they have to be qualified. So, you yes. know, we had to get them, we only, we're only getting women that are certified by MMDA mm. TESTA. All right, but you do know that because of the, the really bad um, accidents involving buses, mm -hmm. that the uh, MMDA had actually proposed that uh, more women bus drivers be employed because I think the study has found that women are actually supposed to be uh -huh. less aggressive and more uh, care, uh, much more cautious behind the wheel. They're a little calmer around the wheel, yes. A little calmer, yeah, that's, that's the term. All right, and it costs only 12 pesos? Yes. All right, and, and the one thing that's interesting to me, as we were saying, it uses a card type system to pay. Yes. It's like an RFID card. Yes, yeah. uh, I might have one. Okay. Uh, you buy one of these cards. Okay, so similar to what they use in uh, Singapore or in Hong Kong. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same yeah. supplier, actually. The same supplier. There's a chip inside. There's an antenna inside. Yeah. You buy one of these cards. You load it up. Load it up, mm -hmm. and there's a validator right in front when you yeah. walk in in the front door, yeah. and you tap it. Mm. Sometimes you don't even have to tap it, right? I mean, you just pass through the validator, and some it reads your card. Some people just, yes. Just <laughs> put their, their bags on it. Yes. So 12 pesos initially for the yes. first ride. Yes. Um, it, it, it'll take you anywhere. Drop you off, 12 pesos, flat yes. rate. We are working out a flat fare fee, one direction. So if you're coming from uh, LRT Taft, yeah. you can go all the way to the end, to Kalaya and C5. Okay. One fare. Yeah. Fantastic. Whether you take three stops, four stops, five stops, mm -hmm. or you go all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And the maintenance for the buses, would it actually be less because it has uh, a, at least a hybrid system? Yes, I think it's a, it will be a lot less. Mm -hmm. One, your brakes, you won't spend that much on brakes because you have an electric motor braking for you. I see. see. Uh, two, your diesel engine is not that used up because you have an electric motor also. Yeah. 
So, so the, electric maintenance motor, will be the electric motor works at the same time as the diesel engine, or does it kick in only at a certain time? It's a parallel system. There's actually two systems. Ours is a parallel system where the electric motor and the diesel engine work at the same time, all the time. I see. So it's not like, uh, say, one of those hybrid cars where you start off, uh, say, using a little bit of gas, and then yes. it switches entirely to electric. So now it works in tandem, both yes. diesel and electric. Yes, it works better with our traffic. Without traffic. Because our traffic so good is luck to you in Manila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would even think it works better without traffic. <laughs> that was built for stop and go traffic. The right. series hybrids hmm. work well if you can go fast. Fast, of course. Now, you're the only company so far that's bringing so it far. in, right? Nobody else has, has actually thought of it? Yes. So you'll wait and see if it actually becomes, uh, it, it adapts to our <laughs> road conditions. Well, Philip Apostol of uh, Green Frog Zero Emissions, thank you very much for, for telling us all about the hybrid buses. Thank you. Hope to see them soon on our roads. Definitely. Thank okay, you. thank you. Coming up next, a look at the latest smartphone from LG and a preview of the Samsung S4 when Future Perfect Tech Shorts returns.